What STAR is about is about, I guess, making those twinkle moments, making the connections. Because one of the biggest things we see is the children that are really frustrated when they know what they want to say and don't have the motor capacity to communicate it. These days, though, the research shows whether your child is a late bloomer, typically developing just a little slower, versus a late talker, a reflection of a later language disorder, the best thing to do is jump in, start the therapy. A late bloomer will catch up really fast. A late talker doesn't lose any time. The STAR model, having the parent involvement all the way through the process, definitely makes a big impact on their their kind of takeaway from it. Because really, like an hour, three times a week is going to make some changes, but the parents are in their lives all the time. Yet at the same time, we're not wanting to change these parents into therapists. We want to maintain that playful interaction. So what we're focused on is how can, in everyday activities, you use what you know about your child, you are the expert, to build on these skills and kind of improve their capacities in these home settings, in these comfortable routines where children tend to thrive. One of the really cool things we do for our kids that go through treatment is we write goal attainment scaling. What we ask the parents is, if you walked away from this and one thing changed and you would say, yep, that would it worth it for me, that, that's what we want to be our first goal on the goal attainment scale. We certainly walk out of a lot of parent meetings where people are like, yes, that is my child. You just described my child. So when we go back and review those goals at the end of the program or a month after the program, the parents are like, oh yeah, that was a problem, wasn't it? And that's a wonderful feeling for both of us to kind of step back and be like, oh yeah, that's not even really an issue anymore. Some of the red flags that we watch for at the younger age Ages, especially very young, if they're not babbling, they don't go through that babbling phase. Um, that's a big concern because it's actually really important for later speech development that you go through that stage of playing with your mouth and moving your mouth around and things like that. Um, but it could also be a sign of other motor speech based concerns, um, meaning that it's harder for them to control how their mouth moves, usually later reflected as a pretty significant delay in speech production. But I think a lot of it is gut and instinct for the parents if you're feeling like something just is different just bring it up at least and you know maybe look into early intervention options to see what supports might be available because yeah. we want them to be independent creative children that move through life you know showing what they want and what they think and sharing that information both individually and in a group situation